So we're close to a cycle top. Fundamentally, you know, it's too high. Soon we're going to get a recession. So now once you start reassessing on what you know, it's too late because the insiders sold already. By the time the media and the economic reports tell you what's going on, you know, the market could be down 20, 30 percent. everyone and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira, part of the outreach team of Silver Bullion here in Singapore, where we want to help you truly secure your wealth. Dr. Charles Nenner joins us today. Dr. Nenner was named one of the legendary technical analysts by Forbes, and his unique system was successfully used by Goldman Sachs for several years where he served as head of market timing on Goldman's proprietary trading desk. Since 2001, Dr. Nenner has been the founder and CEO of the Charles Nenner Research Center. And we're delighted to have Dr. Nenner join us once again today. It's time to saddle up and silver up for Charles Nenner. Dr. Nenner, welcome back to SBTV. How are you doing? Doing fine. Doing fine. Glad to have you back. You know, um, Dr. Nenner, your your time with Goldman Sachs, if we could touch on this just a bit, it's noted as you being head of market timing on Goldman's trading desk. Can you tell us about that time? Because when it comes to, to timing, timing is almost everything. Yes. Uh, well, uh, mostly uh, the work went to the big hedge funds and to the uh, prop traders. So the prop traders is the department that I did the timing for that invests the own money of Goldman Sachs. Now, Goldman Sachs has so much money to, to invest that, uh, that it's very difficult to buy something if market's going up because you move the market too much. So you have to buy something when it's still going down. But then you have to know that there's a low coming. Otherwise, you go down, down, you start losing money. So the timing was very important because it took such big positions. Now, lately, we changed it. Lately, it's already 20 years. We have even an intraday service that tells you which hour to buy and which hour to sell. On top, we developed, or I developed the, uh, the, the, the program that tells you if something goes up, how high it goes and how low it goes. So that makes investing very scientific, not based on, uh, on, uh, on any news item. And uh, so because my clients are not as big as Goldman Sachs, although there are a lot of institutions over there, but they just use it because, you know, an institution can come and say, listen, I want to buy, for instance, IBM. I think fundamentally it looks good, but I don't know, should I buy it in a week, in a month, in two months? So then we do the work and we tell them when the cycle low is, what the price is. And then they, based on their fundamental research, we do the market timing. Okay, interesting. So I guess that's uh, it's all about the cycles as you, you later on went into and developed your own proprietary proprietary method. Uh, you know, Dr. Nenner, last time we spoke, you said a couple things that, that have stuck with me. And, and you said that you are worried about the state of the dollar and the safety of, of people, your subscribers. And, and we'll get into the safety part in, in just a bit. But what's interesting is at that time, uh, let's say de-dollarization, it was still just sort of a, a whisper. So I, I want to reflect back to you saying you were worried about the U.S. dollar. Are you more worried for that U.S. dollar now than you were back then? No, it's the same situation based on cycles. Just for the next couple of months or this year, it's still going to be okay. But long-term cycles on the dollar are down. And I was very worried because I think we talked about war cycles, if I'm correct. And as you know, is I did uh, build war cycles of the last 3,000 years. And already 10, 15 years ago, I started warning there are going to be a lot of wars and major wars, and that's actually happening right now. Uh, so far, all the cycles are doing their work. So I'm really convinced that also the dollar is going to get in trouble later this year. Um, it's, it's not going much higher, but it's going to stay stable for the next couple of months until cycles turn down. Okay, so, so when you mentioned that um, it, it, it still looks like it's going to be in some trouble, what kind of things are you seeing that, that may put it even deeper into, into trouble? Well, as you, as you maybe remember, I don't deal so much with why things happen. I leave that to all the hundred thousands of people who don't know what happens, but then the why it happens after the fact. We only deal with what's going to happen. 
And there could be all kinds of reasons. There could be default. I mean, default is coming because uh, uh, in short-term interest rates are very high and, and, and the, the, the American government has so much debt that they have to pay uh, interest on so soon they cannot do it anymore. Maybe, we're gonna, maybe I'm pretty sure, actually, we're going to be in a major war. Uh, the whole country is in disarray because of all the millions of people coming to the uh, southern border, which I am convinced a lot of terrorists are coming also. So I can come up with a lot of reasons, but it's not important because my clients want to know what happens and when it happens. And I was, we decide later, we read in the papers why it happened. We don't know right now. I admit, I think I'm one of the, these people that... Um... I, I do ask myself why, and I wonder why, you know, are things going to happen here and there? And, and, and you know, you're trying to look at different events happening and, and what the conclusion might lead to. And But you, on the other hand, you you really just look at the cycles. So it, it's a bit different than something that we, person like myself, has to try and understand better. Well, I give you, I give you an idea that uh, three, four weeks before this coronavirus came out, we were in 0% cash because the cycle showed there's going to be a big down move. Now, nobody could have known why. So it's kind of an interesting situation why cycles can predict what's going to happen. It's going to happen, but it could be anything. So in this case, it was a virus. You wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't have known that. So instead of, you know, reading reports and trying to figure out what is triggering it, for instance, maybe, maybe you remember there is the, uh, what they call the black swan theory. So the person who wrote the Black Swan Theory says, you know, from time to time, there is, there is an issue why markets can, can collapse and we don't know what's going to happen, why it's going to happen. So they spend billions of dollars trying to figure that out. I don't try to figure out what's going to happen. I just want to know when it's going to happen. But since all the big firms don't deal with when it's going to happen, the only thing can do is why it's going to happen. And then after it happens and they lose money for the clients, they says, well, nobody could have known this. No, you couldn't have known this, but you have to spend your time and trying to figure out when it's going to happen and forget why it's going to happen. So that's what my firm does. The interesting thing is we have a couple of uh, uh, times a week we have what they call intraday surfers. So we tell you, give an example, the S&P this morning at 9.15, you buy it. It goes up so many points till 3.20. Sometimes a news item comes out, sometimes not. It has nothing to do with it because how could we say where the market goes for the next four or five hours if it depends on anything happening? So it proves itself for many, many years. You also said, though, uh, part of your economic outlook for 2023, the last time we spoke, was that inflation will pick up. And you had said that inflation was going up in waves and we are not out of the woods. So, Dr. Nenner, when you mentioned inflation in waves, how would you describe the current wave of inflation? Well, we had the first wave up, and now we have some correction. And then in a couple of months, we have the next wave up. It's like a stock. A stock doesn't go up straight up. It goes up, it goes down a little bit, goes more up, go down. So everything moves in these waves, which, which Elliott wave is called the Elliott wave. And uh, so now it's flattening out. And then in a couple of months, when the cycles bottom again, inflation picks up. So there'll be a bit of a wave or a cycle with the inflation? Yeah, we showed that for the next 30 years, inflation is going up longer term with, you know, intermediate correction. If you're enjoying this interview with Dr. Charles Nenner and I, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if you are looking for price exposure to gold and silver while being fully backed by physical gold and silver with some of the lowest prices and premiums around, I'd like to invite you to take a look at Silver Bullion's product, Stargrams. Go to www.silverbullion.com.sg, click on the Precious Metals tab, and click on Stargrams. <laughs> okay, 30 years. Yeah, Dr. Nenner, do, do you see the economy or, or this inflation? I mean, I know you just said it, it, it's going to go up, but is there any chance it's going to settle down where we'll have that little lull where, where we could relax and reassess a bit? Yeah, but again, you do like the governments are like a, a Freudian father figure who takes care of us. They're just part of the whole situation and the cycle situation. Now, if you want to reassess, if you look that from the, the, before the 1929 crash, the, the PE is one of the highest in history. Uh, the, it's, it's, it's totally overvalued to market. So what do you have to reassess? 
So if the market is overvalued, the only thing that's left is when cycles stop, people are going to suddenly wake up, oh, the market's overvalued. As long as cycles erupt, they don't look about it. So we're close to a cycle top. Fundamentally, you know, it's too high. Um, soon we're going to get the recession. So we already uh, reassess what's going on. Now, once you start reassessing on what you know, it's too late because the insiders sold already. By the time the media and the economic reports tell you what's going on, you know, the market could be down 20, 30 percent. When we spoke that, that last time, you, you had said that um, we're not out of the woods. And, and that always stayed on my mind because the, the question I had was, what exactly, how would you define the woods and, and how would you, you define when we are out of the woods? Well, out of the woods actually based on cycle means when we're in a cycle low. Uh, out of the woods means that don't listen to the people say this inflation is over or the Fed says it's over because based on cycle, it's not over. Uh, based on the woods means that long-term interest rates are not going higher, they're still going higher. It seems that nobody cares. Uh, it's very strange. Um, not out of the woods means that soon we're going to have a major low in gold and silver we're waiting for, so something is going to trigger that also and something is going wrong. It's interesting because we had inflation, we had wars, and gold and silver don't continue the bull market. Why? Because the cycles are still down. Once the cycle bottom, the news doesn't have to get worse, just people realize it, and then we go in a big bull market. Last time we spoke about that war cycle, and, and you know it has definitely showed itself to be true. We're seeing wars breaking out uh, or on the cusp of breaking out all over the place. The R cycles define, let's say, the severity of events or the length of events when it comes to, to wars. Yeah, so let's 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 start with the, with the, an example of IBM. If you look at IBM, you look at yearly cycles. So you know what the next couple of years going to be. But in between, you have quarterly cycles, monthly cycles, short term cycles. Uh, the same thing in wars. You got short term cycles and long term cycles. Now, what I said is the long term cycles are now up. That means is it's going to get much worse, much, much worse. And if you ask me why that much, I have an answer. I think it's going to be the West against a combination of Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea. And I personally, I'm not sure that the West is going to survive uh, because of the mentality we have in the West. Uh, so it's going to be a very, very difficult situation. I think a lot of people would, would also agree. It, it does definitely look like um, it'll be a West, Middle East, East type of a type of a deal going on. Um, so you're seeing that there there's a possibility. There's always possibilities where the West will not come out of this very well. Right. And so I guess with that, we, we'd have to understand that, uh, of course, the dollar, the reserve currency, I mean, all currencies in, in, in the West anyway, I mean, it's not just about the war or, or let's just say physical destruction. It's also economic destruction we're looking at. Well, it's also that because they boycott uh, countries now, you know, you got the BRIC countries who says, you know what, we're going to be independent. We're going to make an anti-dollar. And the problem is if the dollar is not going to be the reserve currency anymore, then they cannot print dollars anymore, and then actually they're in bankruptcy. So, but with the BRICS, I mean, I don't know if this is in your cycles where, of course, a, a reserve currency will, will, let's say, die or fade away and, and a new one comes in. It, are we looking at some type of a, a, a new currency? Would that be a BRICS currency? Would that be some type of global currency? Well, if, if you look at the long-term cycles, then, you know, because, you know, I'm from Holland, that the Dutch Gilder was the reserve currency, hundreds of years ago. And then it changed into the English pound. And then the, the empire of England went under. And then it's now it's the euro, uh, it's, it's the dollar. So now the empire of the dollar is going under and we're going to get the next one. And that's all based on cycles. It all goes in regular intervals. I, I don't know if this is in, in your cycles, but when we look at what's going on in Europe, Netherlands, as an example, where we see food, you know, food is... Uh, Somehow it looks like it's becoming almost weaponized. Is is there anything in your cycles regarding, uh, I mean, I guess, food or, or sustenance or anything like that? It's it's just something that's out of control. You know, the, the first wave in Holland 
not the food, the total inflation was almost 19%. Now, you can, you can lower it now to 6 7%. But you don't take off the 19%. It doesn't go back from the 90%. It just goes on top of the 90%. So it, it, it's very, very difficult for average people to, uh, to, to survive. Uh, to heat a house is so expensive that I have friends that closed the house in Amsterdam, went to Spain, into a hotel with food, and it was cheaper than, than heating the house in Amsterdam. You mentioned, though, you, you were also worried about the people and, and, and your, your subscribers, the safety right. of subscribers. What do you see coming, like, I guess, with these cycles? I mean, I mean the word safety. Yeah. Late, lately, we, we, we deal with and subscribers ask about physical safety. Because we've got clients, let's say, in the Midwest, in Asia, in South America, so they discuss between them what is the safest place if hell breaks loose. And that's something that has never been there before, that people are really worried about their uh, physical safety. So it, go, it, goes, it goes at that far that if you would have a nuclear attack in New York, where would you go? Uh, where would you settle? You have to check out where the wind blows, how far the, the radiation goes. So people suddenly are busy with that. How, I mean, should it get to that? Because I, I've heard quite a few people who have been using that, that word nuclear. Do we survive it? I mean, how do we, are, are we going to make it through? Or is the human race really going to go through a, a, a new change, a, a new cycle? Well, are we going to survive? Everybody always survives. But, uh, you know, I don't know if you're going to survive it or me going to survive it. A lot of people are going to die. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Nern, if you could, what, what other cycles do, do you see on, on the horizon? Well, it depends what you do. Is For instance, let me give you an example of gold and silver. It's in a trading range for a year and a half. We make about 50, 60 percent a year trading gold and silver just based on cycles. So you don't have to wait if something starts in a bull market. If you know it goes up 5%, 6%, down 7%, 8%. If you know when, everything is very tradable. Uh, the same thing with crude oil or natural gas. Whatever you take, as long as you know what happens, you can make a lot of money. If you, if you for instance, go to our website, charlesnanner.com, and you look at the track record, you see that over the year, we make 100% on everything we do. We made, for instance, 250% on Bitcoin, I think 100% on natural gas. So you don't have to wait for a big move. You just have to know what happens every month and every week. I can tell you if it goes up, I tell you how high it goes, when it tops. For the rest, I leave it up to other people what's going to happen. Because you cannot invest on all these ideas that you don't know if they're correct or not correct. Everybody comes out with another thing. So we don't deal with that. We only want to know if crude goes up, goes down, how much it goes up, how much it goes down. Now, it's, it's very difficult for people, especially if they work with brokers, because the brokers would, uh, will always tell you what's going to happen or why it happened if you lost money. And what you have to do is you have to forget about all that stuff. And just, for instance, we have a 30-day free subscription. You don't even have to give your credit card. See how we do it. You don't have to understand it. If it says, this is a buy, see if it works. You don't have to do it. If you say it goes up for 16 days, it goes up 6 7%, see if it works out. And then slowly you get in a different state of mind, understanding that don't spend your time on trying to figure out what's going to happen, uh, you know, what the fundamental reasons is. Just make a lot of money. Okay, I think a lot of people will, will like that. Something like real estate, though, a lot of people have money in, in real estate. Uh, is it? still in a in a good cycle or are we seeing a change even with with real estate no no also in real estate uh, a couple of years ago the big institutions i told them to buy real estate rent it out and now on a big scale they're selling real estate it's at the top there's a very clear cycle of i think 18.6 years or so in real estate that topped would you say there's more i mean there are definitely pockets of positivity that that people can can really follow you and look to get into yeah, but the problem is, uh, I'll give you an example. If I would tell you we're going into a bull market for gold, and gold is around $2,000, and then the cycle goes down, but they don't follow me. Now I go to 1950. Okay, I'm in there for the long term. Now we go to 1800. They lose 10%. 
they're not in for the long term. They take the losses because they can't sleep anymore. And then just when a cycle bottoms, they are too afraid to buy it. So usually I don't say these things long term because you have to know what's going to happen. And most people are not emotionally strong enough if I say gold is going to double the next 10 years to take the losses and say in 10 years he was correct. Now that's what most people who don't know timing do. They say she's in there for the long term. Right? So what do you mean the long term? It doesn't get, you know, th th that, that most people are not there for the long term because they take the losses if the market crashes. Okay, I, I want to move a little bit closer in, into your, your, your world. How did you come up with the, the vision of, of cycles? Oh, that's very simple. And when I was a medical doctor, I joined a group that did, uh, uh, a psychiatry group that did research when people get psychotic. And we thought every so, so many years, every so many months, they get psychotic. And indeed they did. And then we checked all over the world and we found out that every so many months, all over the world, there are more people getting psychotic than not. Now that was based for instance on the fact that we know that the, a lot of women give pre-birth when it's full moon. Now you can do two things. If an economist says, I don't understand it, I don't deal with it. Or your medical doctor says, you know, I better have more staff because women come in. It's a very known fact. How it works exactly, nobody knows. So if all over the world people become psychotic at the same moment, it has nothing to do with the outside circumstances. Like if markets go up, right? They go up all over the world. The European market goes up, the Asian market goes up most of the time, the US market goes up. So every country makes up a story why the stock market went up today. Very few commentators will say all the markets went up. That's why we are in up wave. So this is how you learn it has nothing to do with outside factors. It all inside factors. So then I saw a program when I was in New York about financial markets, why they go up and down. Thought, let me try the same thing. So I start taking all the data and I did it by hand in the early 80s without computers. And I found the same system. And it has been very successful since, since then. The problem is that, as you might feel also, people are conditioned to think why something happened. It's more important than when it happens and what happens. Very interesting. They always want to know why, which is usually a safeguard for not doing stupid things. Just in making money, you want to know what's going to happen, not why it's going to happen. What's the number one thing you think we should be doing right now, the, the regular folk? I think you should take some profits if you long stocks. It's too risky now. And you should follow us because we're setting up for a next leg in a bull market in the metals. Not yet. Here we go again. Don't now hang up the phone and start buying. Just watch when the cycle bottoms and then you go buy long uh, gold and silver. I guess we're just really going to have to uh, have people go to your website and, and follow you and see what's going on and, and really try to break free from, from the why. So, uh, how can people follow you and, and again, your website name? This is just Charles Nenner, it's my name, dot com. We're also on Twitter and we're also on YouTube, a lot of interviews. Uh, on Twitter, on a Twitter on a regular basis, we also put uh, what we said and what we think is coming. Just a few things. Um, so there's a lot to do. So Dr. Nenner, I appreciate the time you've given and, and we could talk to you again soon. Okay, let's try to stay safe. That's also important. That was Dr. Charles Nenner sharing his views on the economy and precious metals. To see more of Dr. Nenner's work, please go to charlesnenner.com. If you like this video, please subscribe, share, and give us a thumbs up. All are greatly appreciated. Audio-only versions of this interview can be found on iTunes and Spotify.